It was the Hudson Clement game and the Mountaineers got win number one and now all the attention turns to the backyard brawl this is the blue gold sports podcast what's going on everybody wesley shoemaker patrick we're now back with you today a happy happy victory monday for the west virginia mountaineers they picked up a 56 17 win over duquesne wasn't the prettiest early, um, but after the after the delay, they figured it out, uh, got going, and it was the Hudson Clement game. Uh, three touchdowns, five catches, 177 yards, and then a scholarship after the game. So it doesn't get much better than that for the walk on from Martinsburg in your first ever career start and career game. So, uh, lots to talk about from Duquesne. Just first off, your overall impressions of the victory, Patrick. Um, I think. It obviously stood out to me, you know, uh, Devin Carter was out and that was, um, I don't want to say something that that caused a lot of worry just because, you know, they're facing an FCS opponent. Um, This was a game that, you know, is expected to kind of reflect on that final 56 to 17 score, but it was still good to see somebody stepped up with, Devin Carter, the number one guy out. Um, it was good to see Jaheim White really kind of go out, 12 carries for 110 yards. Um, I think Garrett looked really good as a passer, 10 for 18, 240 yards, four touchdowns. Um, I think another thing that we kind of noticed in the second half of that game when Nico got in was that um, Garrett was Garrett was the right pick for starting quarterback. Uh, Garrett looks like he is – very ahead of Nico in just the developmental realm. Um, the defense looked good. It was good to see a lot of those young guys, both on offense and defense, get in and just get some playing time, see what they can do. Yeah, there was a there was a lot to unpack in a small window of time. So let's just let's start from the onset. Who did not play? That was key. Traylon Ray did not play. Devin Carter did not play. Justin Johnson did not play on offense. Those were the three kind of big ones. Um, I really wish Traylon Ray could have played, seen him, but he was shut down more for precautionary reasons, it sounded like. Um, We were hopeful to get him back for Pitt, but to me it sounds like it's it's something along the lines of shin splints or something that is a – cause of being overworked he got here late as neil brown said um and he's been working pretty hard and because he's he's gotten up to speed and he's played um he was limited at penn state and then he, we were all expecting him to play and then he comes out in sweatshirt and shorts and it was like oh he's not even on the dress list that sucks um devin carter looked for him on the first couple drives he wasn't there he was dressed he was on the dress list however he really never had a helmet on and as we found out later he got stepped on last week in practice and therefore was just not running well in pregame warm-ups and did not play and then uh justin johnson he could have gone but he didn't play so that's kind of the injury front from there we'll get into more injuries later but that's kind of setting the stage for what this was and that was then the hudson clement game uh Walk on from Martinsburg, redshirted last year, found out right before the game he was going to start, and then he goes for three touchdowns, almost two bills, and only on five catches. So uh, what stood out to me, I'll start with the offensive side of the ball, is the explosive plays were there. Uh, there were a couple big drops on what probably could have been touchdowns. Um, I think one was from Jeremiah Aaron, and one was from Preston. I know um, – mm-hmm. And then Cortez dropped like a 15-yard out, which he was wide open. So Garrett looked really good throwing the ball. Deep ball had a lot of good touch on it, and he put it in the right spot, certainly. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's good to see. Uh, It's good to see that he's not just on the ground, right? Um, So that was the biggest thing for me uh, offensively. Uh, CJ was a little scary when he got banged up, but he came back in the game, and he seems all good to go. Uh, Your face says it all there. Uh, defensively, it's it's still what are we doing in the secondary? It's who yeah. can we plug and play and find to put in the best position to win? Because boy, it looked rough there. Andrew Wilson Lamp, I hate to go on you, bud, but like 
it, it was bad on that first drive. And then mm-hmm. um, you also had the punt miscue, I believe, with Jacoby Spells. Um, so it's just not a lot of things were working there. And you kind of let a Duquesne team tear you apart for – a good part of that first quarter there. So that's concerning. Obviously Um, Pitt throws the ball a ton. Um, I was doing some research today. They had 19 passing attempts for 15 or more yards against Cincinnati this weekend. So they're going to want to throw the ball down the field. And if they can start picking apart the secondary, that could be a problem. Uh, Defensive line. They're really playing well. Um, Whoever's in really is producing. They're, they're doing a little by committee type approach there. And it seems to be working up front. They're really kind of getting after the quarterbacks and causing chaos. Mike Lockhart's playing his absolute butt off right now. Um, he's leading the way in the middle of that D line. So that's that's kind of what I'm happy with um, on the defensive side and the special teams. Uh, first punt was terrible. Uh, you can't really let that happen. But there were some funky kickoffs, which I'm happy to see the Mountaineers handled well. Um, and they had a couple of punt returns, which were nice from Preston Fox as well. So that's kind of my main takeaways from that game. Um, but yeah, win number one. That's always important. Always love to win the home opener. Gets you back to one and one and one and one's one and one no matter how you did it. So um, things weren't pretty early. Uh, we, we should obviously talk about the delay, hour 54 minute weather delay. Um A lot of people went home, but Mountaineers certainly figured it out after that delay and I'm glad they did because it was it, it really just wasn't pretty. They just weren't. They just looked a little bit slow and stuck early. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like they kind of thought they'd just roll through this, and then I think they realized, all right, let's get our stuff together, and they certainly did. So win number one's good. Um, but yeah, just Hudson Clement. Let's get let's get into that guy. Um, who would have thought? I guess. Um, He's 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 had really good games. State championship, I think he had eight touchdowns in 2021. Former West Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year. A lot of talent, a lot of speed, but they were just waiting for him to put it together, and he finally did. And so that's another receiver that it looks like it's reliable because um, we've been having question marks about this receiver room since the end of last season. Uh, since KP entered the portal, Sam James decided not to come back. Since Bryce Ford, obviously he aged out of eligibility and went to the NFL. So we knew there was going to be question marks and the question marks continue to swirl. And it's almost like you're playing your way for spots right now through two games. And it seems to me that Hudson definitely played his way into more playing time because it's not like any of the guys of Cortez Braham or Jeremiah Aaron have stepped up really. It's been the Devin Carter show and that's it. And then the guy who goes in for Devin Carter happens to produce more than anyone else. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at with this receiver room right now. Yeah. um, He, he looked really impressive. Um, I saw one of, one of his touchdowns. It was just a, it was a simple double move that it fooled the coverage on the corners. And then he found himself behind everybody, just wide open. Nobody within it. Nobody within 10 yards of him. Garrett makes the throw. Um, but yeah, five catches for 177 yards, three touchdowns. Longest one was a 70 yard reception. Um, the guy stepped up when we needed it. And so now, you know, you're looking at a room where, we've seen Devin Carter kind of prove himself to be a threat um, against Penn state. Now you've got a guy like Hudson Clement who, you know, he's looking at, he could be that second threat if you need. And then Preston Fox can be a third, um, you know, anybody else can really fill in for that third spot. Yeah. I think, I think they're really waiting to see on Rodney Gallagher. Um, Mm -hmm. It just seems like, they are, they really want him to be a step further than he is. And I don't think it's any fault of his that he's not at that step yet because of him not coming to campus until June and also playing quarterback. So the receiver thing is still a little bit new to him just because he hasn't done it in a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So I think by the sound of it, they want him to be a little further along than he is. Um, the trail and Ray injury obviously hurts because uh, he was a guy who was ready and was uh, primed to play. 
and then he he didn't play. Uh, he was very limited against Penn State, and that explains why he didn't get that many snaps against Penn State because he was dealing with this injury um, before that. So if you can get him back, um, Cortez Braham, you're too old to be dropping that pass. Let's be real, and the drops have gotta the drops have gotta stop. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, the contested catches in the end zone are tough, but they're. The, there was at least one or two balls there that should have been caught. Uh, Neil Brown said today they they counted four drops on their end. Um, so it's just not pretty when Garrett's throwing the ball as well as he is. And um, he's the first Mountaineer quarterback with four touchdowns in a game since Will Greer did it in 2018 home finale against Oklahoma. So credit to Garrett there. Um, and he looked good. And he's going to have to continue to look good, but he's also has to continue to make the easy throws. There was a couple there. One that stood out to me was Cole Taylor. He had Cole Taylor kind of near the sideline. Cole Taylor's already six seven. It seems like he's trying to make it so where he can get it high. Just put it, just put it on him. He's bigger than all those dudes anyway. Like make the easy throws. And I asked Garrett about that after the game. I said, hey, like Neil says, you need to make the layups. How do we get there? How do you get to making those layups? He said it's repetitions, it's practice, it's just that. But Neil also talked about today how Garrett needs to calm down, how he is such a ball of energy. If you can't tell Mm -hmm. by how he conducts himself, then you're not watching the same dude I'm watching because he's fiery. He's their leader on offense. However, he's got to control himself, especially early on. And I think this week's a really big test for that because you're going to have 65,000 screaming fans in MPS on Saturday, and they're going to be looking at six – at quarterback waiting for him to make a play. Um, mm-hmm. And they're going to ask him to make a play from the start to the beginning from, from this, from the start to the end, beginning to the end. And it's, it's up to him if he, if he can kind of handle the moment because this is the, this is the big moment. Penn state was a big moment. And we saw early, they were very conservative. They were not really throwing the ball down the field. It was a handoff. It was a pitch. It was a screen pass here. So what, what's, what's this environment going to be like for him is what I'm curious to see. Yeah. Uh, one of the things you know, the 10 for 18 is the misleading stat line. Um, you know, there was the one to Preston Fox that, you know, it just just went right through his hands. And, you know, that's a catch you got to make. But that was also – that was probably one of the best balls Garrett had thrown all day. Um, and then, you know – I think it's throws like that where he almost feels like it needs to be needs to be a perfect throw. And sometimes it just doesn't have to be a perfect throw. It's just got to be, you know, hit him in the chest, hit him in the numbers, or, you know, just lead him off towards the sideline a little bit. You know, you don't have to pin it a little high, especially when it's going to Cole Taylor, who, like you said, is already a big guy. So... But, yeah, um, just kind of focus on those little things. I think his deep ball looks good. Um, I think it's just going to come down to those medium passes, you know, within that 10 to 15-yard range. If he can hit those, um, I think he'll be ready for MPS on Saturday night. Yeah, the the 10 for 18, I do agree, is a little misleading. Um, out of all quarterbacks, he was, I think, like eighth or ninth in the country. Um, Mm -hmm. and rated by PFF, which is pretty, pretty high. Um, I'm looking here. He's, he's, yeah, he's eighth. So he had a, he's at a rating of 90.5, which is pretty good. And, um, if, if let's say three of those balls get caught, you're at 13 for 18. Um, that helps you out a lot more. And that's at a 72%, uh, mark of completion percentage but he's got to get it up above the 50s he's got to get it into at least the low 60s um mm-hmm. to give West Virginia a chance going forward and he's got to get some help and those that receiver room's got to start helping him out um the running backs are certainly doing it uh Jaheim White he had a lot of praise go his way following the game um he looked good I'm not surprised right like that running back yeah. room just keeps rolling him out rolling him out rolling him out um, let's switch sides. Let's, let's talk about the secondary. Um, Ooh, <laughs> it's, it's still a work in progress. I think, I think we got a little ahead of ourselves with the new personnel, with the new players, with the transfers. Um, it's just not working yet. Um, now there's going to be some schematic changes, this weekend, there's going to be some playing time changes. 
this weekend. Um, Mountaineers got their first two interceptions this week, but they also had guys wide open. And it was when the quarterback bought time, just like Drew Aller did week one, and they found a soft spot in the zone, and they were there. Um, wide open throws to me, like they're not pressing these guys hard enough. And I get, they're not like press corners and such, but it just feels to me like there's, there can be a level of physicality with that secondary. That's not there. And Neil Brown talked about how they have to get their hands on receivers today. Um, it's, it's just a wait and see mode. And so my question for you is, do you think they can get this fixed? And if so, how soon? Um, I think they're going to be I, – I think they'll have to get it fixed. If, you know, if this team wants to compete, they're going to have to fix that secondary. Um, you can't – as a football team, uh, as, at West Virginia's level, you cannot be having a secondary leaving guys open – against a team like Duquesne. You know, Duquesne's a good football team, but you just – you can't be leaving guys open, especially as frequently as they were. Um, you know, in the first half of that game, before that delay, I think West Virginia was a little worried because they – West Virginia – I don't think West Virginia was going to be able to cover anybody for a while in that game. Um Duquesne was just able to drive down the field with ease, it seemed like, for a little bit. Um, the muffed punt helped, and then they get the ball right back, and it's a 38-yard touchdown pass, and the guy was wide open. Um, I think they're going to have to get it fixed. How they can get it fixed, um, I'm not sure what they're going to have to do to get that fixed but they will have to do something. Otherwise, it's going to be a long season. And let's be real here. Like, all credit to Duquesne, but they're an FCS opponent. Like, mm-hmm. you've got to – you can't have, like, the 38-yard touchdown pass in the first round. Like, that just can't happen. He was – like, he – it's not like it was a contested catch. The receiver, like, was standing still waiting for the ball. And that's just – that's an issue, and everyone knows it's an issue. It's not a secret. It's an issue, um, and they've got to get it figured out. Um, credit to Beanie Bishop. Uh, he got the pick, uh, the first one. I'm blanking on who got the second one. I think it was a linebacker. Uh, um, Teddy a fool. Nope, that's the other team. That's what? Teddy Awful. Oh. It's, he had yep. the funniest name. Uh, he had the funniest name in the world. Then. Uh, it was, I can tell you this right now. Oh, Avery Wilcox, Avery Wilcox. He got the second pick there in the second half, but a lot of dudes played for the Mountaineers. Um, Jared Bartlett looked good up front. Uh, Tommy, I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name. Number three, he looked good. Um, as we said, Mike Lockhart, uh, Lee, Lee Koba didn't play a ton. Um, it's probably best. He, he can get, he can get a little break here because he's the middle of that defense for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too upset with the performance overall. I just think that it's, it's now, it's now like it's go time. Like, all right, Mm -hmm. we're two weeks into this. Now let's, let's start, let's start rolling this thing along and, uh, see what, see what, we'll see what goes on. Yeah, definitely good to get a nice tune up game after Penn state, but before Pitt. um, and it was good to um, – I mean, the offense looked really good. Still, you know, there are things to work on with the offense. The defense looked good you know, coming after the rain delay. Um, obviously, still things to work on, but I think it was a good confidence-building game. But also, it's just another game that's going to give you film to look at and things to work on. And now let's uh... – Turn our attention to Saturday. Um, we're not going to get into a ton of pit stuff. We're going to come back with pit stuff later in the week. But um, they're coming off a 27-21 loss to Cincinnati. Um, Phil Jerkovic, their starting quarterback, 10 of 32. 10 of 32. That's a mouthful. Uh, 179 yards, three touchdowns, five sacks. Um, but Pitt also gets after the quarterback in the same breath. 
Um, as I said earlier, they like to throw the ball down the field. Um, and they get it done in a lot of different places on defense. So um, I'm excited for the atmosphere. I think it's going to be rocking. Um, mm-hmm. As Neil said, first true night game since 2016. Shout out Mike Montoro uh, for that stat poll. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be a, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be loud. It's going to be a good time in Morgantown. And I'm expecting I'm expecting good things from the Mountaineers overall. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that game. Uh, it should be should be a blast. First time in 12 years that Pitt's been here. Well, we will come back to you with a full Pitt preview uh, later in the week. Be sure to keep it locked at bluegoldsports.com and all of our social media channels. Uh, for myself, I'm Wesley Shoemaker, joined by Patrick Renew. And if you made it this far, thank you for listening. This is the Blue Gold Sports Podcast.